Hey y'all, Kathy, Crowder's Mountain, North Carolina. Welcome back to another how-to video in this series. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, how to choose the tape that you use. Now, there's all kind of brands and the best thing I can tell you, the very best thing, is to make sure your board is prepped. If you're making a barn quilt, and you hadn't sanded down your board, and you hadn't wiped it off with a damp cloth, and let that dry, then you prime it, and make sure that primer is good and dry before you start. You can't blame it on the tape if it don't stick or work if you hadn't done your prep work. So that that's a really important thing to think about. But there's all kinds of brands out there and again, how what I say is choose what works for you. If you have one that you're using and you love it, don't change it just because somebody else said change it. Don't do that. You use what you want to. But I started out with the scotch tape. It's delicate surface and I love it. I mean, I love it. And I've got it in all different sizes. You see it comes in this... Um, quarter inch too. This is the half inch and that's a quarter inch and then they make it in the one inch or and one and a half inch. I think that's what this is. But anyway, it's, a, it's really good tape and I like it. I have tried the Scotch Blue that's um, it's fine lines. Now, it works. It works. But I like the Scotch better. And then I've also, uh, you know, tried to, the cheaper stuff when a tape was so expensive when I first got started. I got this half inch. Now, I can't tell you the brand name, but um, I forgot. But I didn't like it for drawing and, and taping off my blocks in within my barn quilt. But it, I use this little skinny, what is that, an eighth of an inch? Um, might be skinnier than that, but it looks like about an eighth of an inch. And I use it to go around circles, like I'll show you how. And this one will be using this little skinny tape. Can you see that without that light? Uh, but anyway, here, this one, you might see that better. And I go around it, but but when I go around it to give myself more room to paint and more flexibility, um, instead of having to go real, real slow, I put this around the outside of that tape, and it seals that down, tape on tape. Seems like it works that way. So it, I've used, I've got about four more rolls. And I think I probably had ten to start with, so I use it. But now, a funny thing happened a couple weeks ago. I ran out of this tape. I got this big tape, see it? But when I'm making a 24 by 24, especially like um, a couple that I got coming up, uh, a honeybee and things like that, it's just too wide. It just, it, it's just too wide. And I, and, I, and I flip it around, use the other side not to waste tape. But I even cut that in half and it still felt like I was wasting a lot of tape because I didn't need that much width. Well, I went to the um, big box stores and I couldn't find any more of the half inch. And I looked on Amazon and I couldn't find it. So I thought, well, I need to do something. Well, I picked up this frog tape because a lot of people love this yellow frog tape. The green, not so much. And I don't like using it. I had used it before and I didn't like using it, but people just raving about this yellow. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm not above learning something new. So I got the yellow. And I have to tell you now, I love my Scotch tape. Scotch delicate surface, but this yellow delicate surface frog tape, it is a close contender, I'm gonna tell you. 
So there, there was, it was on sale on Amazon, so I got some more. So I'm going to be using this yellow for a while, but I'm going to keep some of the purple on hand, the lavender, because if I'm, if I'm trying to paint, and get near a yellow section, that kind of disappears. But if that's the only trouble I got with it, I'm good. So I'll just use this scotch tape, so I'm going to be using both of them. But that's what I, I wanted to tell you about. Um, you, you just have to look at the manufacturer's suggestions for what tape you need and, and what surface that you're going to be working on. And it's, I'm talking about barn quilts now, so this, these two are very good delicate surface and I'll be showing you when I'm painting this one how I peel off the tape and that kind of thing but um, just remember if your tape is not sticking you need to think about is there a lot of uh, moisture in that room humidity is it clean did you wipe it down good is it dirty you know if you just bring in a board from from your lumber company and they've cut it for you, you got sawdust all over it you need to get rid of, or if you've sanded it, you need to get rid of those little particles. Um, but if you got a lot of humidity and moisture in the room, it's not gonna stick no matter what you kind of paint you use. So just open a window, uh, turn on a fan or something. And so get some of the, um, the moisture out of the air, but now make sure you let it dry good before you start using your tape. And I'll be back when we're painting this to give you a demonstration of how I take it off and how I tape it up and how I cut the corners and all that good stuff. Talk to you later.